Hey folks, this is Kalani. With the Shadowlands beta starting next week, it should come as no surprise that we have another boatload of information regarding system updates and how everything is shaping up. There were so many community interviews, which is still amazing to see. The dev team really are trying to communicate this time around. So let's break down all this wonderful new information. Before we jump in, be sure to pop by our live stream sometime over at twitch.tv slash Kalani TV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday at 12pm PST and we always love chatting with you wonderful folks, so I hope to see you soon. One massive question that we've had for the longest time is quite simply, how will corruption effects, Heart of Azeroth essences and the Azerite armor systems work going into Shadowlands? Do they last for 5 levels like Legion Legendaries did, or do we not get to use them at all? We finally have an answer, and it depends on the system. Corruptions will be removed when the pre-patch for Shadowlands goes live, so when patch 9.0 hits live servers that's it for corruption. So we have until then to play around with it and have what fun we can with setting up different gear sets, buying the corruptions we want and dying to our grand delusions over and over again. That means corruption effects, the cloak, the negative stuff, none of that will play any part in the leveling for the Shadowlands expansion. It's all going to be left far behind before we even start our adventures to level 60. That is fantastic news in my opinion. The Azerite traits on armor and the Heart of Azeroth essences are going to work differently. These powers will still work on Azeroth, and by the sounds of things, you can go back to Ogrimmar at level 60 and still fire off your super lasers if you equip your neck again, but those systems will cease to work as soon as you enter the Shadowlands or any Shadowlands zones. It's not a level restriction this time, it's not going to turn off at level 55, it's going to be a zone restriction instead. As soon as you pop through that that crazy portal in Ice Crown Citadel, you will lose access to your Azerothian powers. This is also great news in my opinion. If you don't want to farm essences for leveling, you don't have to because they won't be involved whatsoever. They're not going to make it any easier and you're not going to be slower if you don't have the correct essences. But if you still want to show them off, you can go back to Azeroth, equip your neck and blast off whatever essences you want. The same goes for Azerite traits. They aren't completely disappearing they just won't be useful at all in the next expansion. If something does something cool and you like that, you can still use that gear in old content and maybe even time walking when that comes around, assuming it doesn't get disabled, which it might. But as far as the new expansion, new content, new leveling experience and all that wonderful stuff, corruption, essences and Azerite traits will have no part in it. There will also be a big blog post coming soon that details exactly what is getting left behind and what kind of deadlines we'll be working with for other items that will be removed when Shadowlands finally arrives. Most of that stuff will probably be removed in pre-patch for the expansion along with corruption as opposed to launch day. We don't have too much info on the pre-patch but we do know that will happen a few weeks before the actual launch. That means we'll probably get three to four weeks of the pre-patch which is based on the old Wrath of the Lich King Scourge invasion from what little we know. The pre-patch will tell the story of our adventures in Ice Crown leading up to the Banshee Queen's ultimate betrayal. So expect lots of undead creatures, a cool gathering atop Ice Crown Citadel, and maybe another cinematic to show us what happens when Sylvanas crosses into the realm of the dead for the first time. We also know that most of the Shadowlands system changes will come through in the pre-patch as well. This includes the massive leveling overhaul, so we'll all get squished down to level 50 or lower depending on what level you currently are, and then the entire game will play from level 1 to 60 once again, with 60 being the max available in Shadowlands. Every expansion will be playable from 10 to 50, which gives you so many options for how you want to work on your future alts. We also know that leveling in Shadowlands is incredibly quick currently. On the alpha we were able to go from 1 to 50 in 13 hours. We played through Battle for Azeroth on the Alliance side from level 10 to 50, and we had never leveled on Alliance before so we didn't really know what we were doing, we didn't have flying because Pathfinder isn't unlocked on the alpha, and we didn't have any experience bonuses whatsoever. That's incredibly fast leveling when you take all of that into consideration. I know a lot of people have asked about heirlooms as well, because with the bonus experience that leveling speed 
speed could be cut down significantly, but we also now have confirmation that heirlooms will not have any bonus experience in the Shadowlands expansion. That part of heirlooms will be stripped out and replaced with something else that's just as powerful or beneficial, according to the devs. So heirlooms won't necessarily allow you to level super fast in Shadowlands, but they may enable you to level easier with increased power over normal items. We'll have to wait and see, but the plan right now is to remove bonus experience from heirlooms, and I know quite a few people have already spoken out against this, saying it makes heirlooms worthless or useless. Let's wait and see what the extra bonuses that replace it are, but a scaling piece of gear will never be useless for leveling anyway, in my opinion. But what do you think of heirlooms losing their bonus experience? Is that something you can get behind because leveling is already so fast in Shadowlands? Or do you think it removes the entire point of heirloom gear? Let me know in the comments below. Now, with beta starting next week, the promise of more class changes seems to be dwindling. We knew going into alpha that large class changes were going to be few and far between. We were told as much. Most of the class changes are in, they said. Yet we still had some pretty hefty changes come in for classes like shamans. Going forward, classes will still get tweaks, tuning changes and all that good stuff, but larger overhauls like what shadow priests have been asking for might be off the table at this point. The dev team did say they can still change abilities, talents, add in some new stuff, take out some not so great stuff and change how everything interacts with each other, but class overhauls are maybe too much at this stage. I guess keep an eye on the updates as they come in, something could still happen, but I think Shadow will be stuck with Void Form for another expansion at the very least. The good news is that we'll get to see how legendary effects, soul binds and conduits will affect end game play in Shadow Shadowlands, so at least we'll have a better idea how it all fits together. Maybe it doesn't play like hot garbage when you get a few extra borrowed powers under your belt, even though that's definitely not the preferred method of class design. Another large change that we're going to have to get used to is a reduction in the amount of loot that we'll see. With less randomness in the gearing process, the dev team said they would have to offset that with making gear less available than it currently is. If loot is just loot, and we can make best in slot lists again, and we can be done with gearing on any given character, keeping the loot availability the same could have us in best in slot loadouts in record time. So they're going to tone things down a bit. We don't have many specifics to work with, and and in the interview where he talks about it, Ian did say, please don't quote him 100% on this because things will likely change as the beta unfolds, but the given example was the end of Mythic Plus Chest. Right now in BFA, you can get several pieces of loot from the end of Dungeon Mythic Plus Chest. I believe it's three baseline for a timed key at level 15 or below. In Shadowlands, the end of dungeon chest might only give one piece of gear, so you can't spam Mythic Plus to gear up as efficiently, and more of your big rewards will go back to weekly lockouts. This could mean gearing up will take significantly longer, and you would be more reliant on gear sources that have a lockout, like raids or the weekly gear box. Speaking of weekly lockouts and loot, the weekly Mythic Plus Cache, or Vault, in Shadowlands will work differently as well. Instead of just one random option that you'll be stuck with, you're going to be able to add additional options when you open that weekly box. So you might get to choose between a chest piece, a pair of braces, or a pair of boots. Pick the one that you think might be the best upgrade for you, and there you go, less worthless weekly loot. Doing more Mythic Plus dungeons will give you more options when the reset rolls around, which will encourage you to do more than just your one key each week, and doing more activities besides Mythic Plus might also affect the weekly cash. We're not too sure on that yet, but it could be a great way to help you gear up even if you don't like Mythic Plus dungeons. Besides the weekly chest being different in how you acquire goodies, the types of loot you can get will also potentially be quite different. Obviously, you have the typical gear options, and the more content you do, the more options you will have, but apparently there will also be mounts, toys, pets, appearance changing effects, and maybe even transmog that comes out of the weekly chest. We have no idea if that's as a bonus or as one of your choices, but adding in different rewards tells me that different types of content might help you progress towards more unlocks in your weekly chest. And on top of all of that, there will also be a key currency option in your weekly box as well. So if absolutely everything on offer from the box simply won't be an upgrade for you, trash, trash 
and more trash, you can pick the currency stuff instead because that will always be useful. With these changes in play, you shouldn't ever have a worthless or useless weekly reward in Shadowlands. As far as general loot changes go, we will still be using personal loot for everything. The dev team has no plans for changing that back to group loot or master loot, and they feel the removal of titan forging and war forging should make the trading aspect of personal loot less weird. You can't get a plus 5 item bonus to prevent you from trading an item you already have, so once you've geared up a bit, you should be able to trade any unwanted gear much easier and faster than you could have in BFA. Now you've also probably seen all the new customization options coming in Shadowlands, and apparently there's plenty more to come. Adding in new customization options is an ongoing project and won't end just because Shadowlands releases. That means we will probably see additional character creation updates as the expansion unfolds and as new patches are released. So if your main race doesn't have anything at Shadowlands launch, it will probably get some cool stuff later on down the line at least. And one other amazing change related to customization is the removal of the paid service to alter your character's appearance. At this point, the only thing that service offered that a barber shop couldn't do was change your gender. But I guess the barbers have been learning a thing or two recently because they'll also be able to change your gender in Shadowlands. I don't know how you go from cutting hair to lopping off. Ahem. Anyway, every single option in your character creation will be alterable in game, besides your name, obviously at the barbershop for a typical gold price. So if you want to change hairstyle, colour, ear shape, eye colour, jewellery, face shape, skin colour, gender, any of that stuff, it's all on the barbershop in Shadowlands, which is fantastic news. And then the last piece of news we have for right now is the addition of yet another store mount. This is one of the special ones where if you buy 6 months of game time you get it for free, otherwise it's available for 25 buckaroos in the store, I think it was. It's a mechanome inspired dragon by the looks of things, and it even spits sparks every now and then, which is kind of cool I guess. As an overall mount I don't think it's super amazing, but I haven't been too attracted to the whole mechanical monster thing that's been going on over in Mechagon in this expansion anyway, and don't get me started on mechanomes. Anyone from Twitch chat will know exactly what I'm talking about, but if you love mechanical things and you love dragons, this could be a great pickup for you. The only problem left is the acquisition. I don't like store mounts for the most part. I feel a bit better about them when they're also tied to a game time promotion because if you know you're going to play for quite a while, six months game time is cheaper in the long run anyway. I don't think it's perfect and I would always prefer to earn the mount in game, but I'm constantly on a six month sub because, well, obviously I'm going to keep playing. So why not save a bit of money while I'm at it? So I kind of just get this stuff for free, which probably warps my experience a little bit. But if you want to keep playing for the rest to BFA and you want this mechanical drake, it's another six month sub promo deal. Conveniently, we'll be at least a month into Shadowlands when that six month period ends, so I also have no doubt this is another attempt at keeping sub numbers up during the lull period that always happens before an expansion's launch. I would say just stick to your guns and ignore the mount unless you really, really want it. If you're going to play, maybe look into the six month sub thing. If you aren't going to play, well, maybe you can just pick it up for gold when you do start playing again, again, if you really want it. Two tokens will get you enough battle net balance to buy the mount out of the store, so you still have options. If you think it's ugly, just forget it even exists. But that's all we have to talk about in this video. Some huge pieces of news. No experience bonus on heirlooms is going to be a shaker for sure. I also feel like that gender swap in the barbershop will be a very welcome change. And we can finally swap anything and everything in character creation in the barbershop. Those chaps must be due for a raise sometime soon, right? It's kind of crazy what they can do these days, but what do you think from what you've seen so far? Are you glad Corruptions, Essences and Azurite gear won't work at all for Shadowlands leveling? And what do you think the mysterious Scourge Invasion pre-patch could end up looking like? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. If you want to explore the alpha or help us get ready for Shadowlands, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday at 12pm PST, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support 
support the channel right now, and if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names at the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who has subscribed on Twitch already, and to our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, well, now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.